Hello and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block and Coach Fisher. Coach, congratulations. Uh, a hard-fought uh, homecoming victory over a Virginia team that's maybe better than uh, what the perception is. 34-20 the final No score. doubt. I mean, Virginia had played uh, all their game, all their losses. They had five losses, but no losses by more than eight points. And uh, like I said, they played a UCLA team early in the year, and UCLA scored three times on defense to be able to beat them. We knew going to this team's a big team. They're mm -hmm. physical. We knew it was going to be that way. They brought a lot of pressure on defense and offense, so they had some weapons to be able to – to get after you, but I thought our defense really played well in this game, and I thought special teams-wise, our punters and stuff did a real nice job. Well, and your defense sort of set the tone they did. right out of the gate. I mean, you forced turnovers in the first half, but on the first play. For first Virginia. play and get it, get, and then we convert. And what we did, was, which I was very happy about, when you get turnovers, you got to convert. You know what I mean? And and uh, that happened. And uh, we met, got the touchdowns out of them, and you know, it really helped us in the game. 34-20 was the final score. Virginia actually had a lead briefly uh, in the first half, but boom, then it was a barrage, and you, you got a couple scores up there in a hurry and, uh, and kind of maintain control. It really did, out. and we gave them the turnovers back. They capitalized on our turnovers, and we had a couple mistakes that, uh, we, you know, uncharacteristically we, we, we don't need to be doing, but they capitalized on those, but we capitalized back, and, and they got the one down there for the short field, then got the one on Eddie. Eddie actually scores on one, and then, uh, you know, they, they called it down, but then we got it and then converted, but it was very good both ways. Florida State gets the victory. That's 25 in a row now for the Knowles. We'll queue up the highlights and uh, start in the first half. We'll kick things off right after this TV timeout. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, uh, you had two extra days of preparation and maybe more than preparation, uh, just, you know, physical wear and tear at this point in the season. Two more days of rest as you got set for homecoming in Virginia. Yeah, you do, and you need them this time of year because, I mean, you got bumps and bruises and it never hurts to, to be able to relax that body. So uh, it was good going in. Florida State uh, welcomes Virginia to town for homecoming. Another great crowd as uh, yes. the alumni came back and turned out for a Saturday night. Well, a great atmosphere, great environment. The crowd's been wonderful all year, sellouts, and that's, that's what we got to have, and, it, and thank you for doing that. They got the kickoff right here. Bobo really shouldn't have come out on these. Five yards deep. We, Kermit was telling him to stay down. We didn't want to do it. And uh, you know, when you get that deep, that's what's going to happen. We have made a poor decision. Nice run right here by Carlos. Good run right up inside. Carlos ran very physical all night. Third down pickup right here. Wish we could have hit that vertical, but nice pickup. Again, number 80 getting the ball right there. Great job. And we get this run. Nice. Oh, they're back. We didn't get to, We got to pull that center back around and get on that one. And then uh, Jameis just a hair wide. Just, he made a good timing, good read, just a hair. He was just a hair off just early. A nice play, right? Look at Mario. I mean, you talk about played a complete football game. That guy was a man last night. The tackles, he had nine tackles, knocked a force of fumbles, and quarterback pressures and hits. I mean, not here. Nice job by Jameis stepped up. He could have dumped it right here to, to Nick or Rashad on the play, and, uh, but great job by him of running. Scram, those guys did a great job downfield blocking. Jameis saw it there, didn't take it. We, we hurry up, got on the line, ran a stretch play, and uh, great blocking there by uh, Freddie Stevenson, who's done a great job. You know, him and uh, Nick O'Leary, uh, Cam Irving on that side did a great job. Him and Josue uh, on that left side right there. Good run up inside. They, they're doing a good job. But our defense, you know, give up 257 yards on the night. Did a real nice job. Great job on the zone. Look, there's 15 again. 15 and 8, boy. Just, those guys are really growing up and starting to play really good football. Again, balls out, not a sack, but affecting the quarterback. I think we hit the quarterback 21 times on the night. Again, now we're in a little rhythm coming out. Jameis throws a nice little run at play out here to, to Rashad Green, who had 13 catches on the night. Again, another flat route, third down. He was, a, he was a check down route, but they left him wide in the flat, and we took it. And then we get play action right here. Now, this is one hurts. We've got to make this play. Great protect. We've got to make that play because this is the drive we get to pick off of. We're inside the 40 moving on. So then we get the third down right here. All right, get a second down play. We get about five more from uh, Rashad right there in the flat. Now, this is the one uh, they get a pick. So we stop. That guy shouldn't be there. We had an underneath route who's running man coverage against man, and he, for some reason, they kind of got tight, and he just stopped and hesitated, and that guy come off. He shouldn't have been there. Jameis is playing on him cleaning out, and uh, it cost us. Got to see it. And great tip ball right there by – yeah, Jameis is so big and long. And then, he, of course, that jumping ability we all know about. There's Mario off the ball coming up on, on a blitz. They run a bunch right and come open right there. Tyler Hunter, uh, nice tackle. Good job. Lost the edge right there, but good job of retaining it. Reggie North, boy, I tell you what, we tackled very physical last night. I thought we missed very few tackles, played very physical. And, that, and that's, that's an interference call. Terrence did it right there, and they run a little uh, out route, and Terrence got his hand wrapped around it. But right there, we got to see the ball. We're in good position. We're not in bad position right in phase for the ball. We just got to play the ball. And P.J. had that happen once or twice last night, but he tackled well and blitzed well on the night. Nice throw to Rashad on the backside. That was actually a backside read. Uh, Good job by Jameis going to making his reads the right way. 
Again, right. See, I wish we could, we could have thrown the ball outside, but I thought there was a little contact early, but, you know, we didn't get the call, and you got to play on. They get a turnover, and they capitalize on their turnover. They did a really nice job. Good job by Terrence Smith underneath playing there. You know, he and a good rush here by Eddie Goldman. Getting back in coverage. They run an underneath screen. and they, We run this screen against it, it in the same kind of screen. It's a very good play, and uh, they did a good job. Here they run a horn play outside. Pinned our end on a, on a, bl on a uh, blitz pickup and uh, got our end pinned and got the edge. That happened about two times last night, but not too much after that. Great job right here by Chris Casher, Eddie Goldman, them guys flying the ball. Terrence Smith, defense played very hard. There's Mario getting a rush. Back shoulder. Again, P.J.'s in great. Got him cut off. Gets a back shoulder throw. Got to, got to play the ball more in phase. But, you know, critical here. Missed an extra point. So it's 13 to 7. And, uh, you know, you never know. That's why those things are never taken for granted. That's why old Roberto is good to have. Now, they, I tell you what, now they played us very good. Man coverage, good secondary. Uh, they played Ehrman really good right there. We come back. Jameis just a little bit off on that ball. He got to get that ball outside. See, so Rashad to him. Get it outside and get it out there to him. He knew he had him beat. And, uh, Get the throw out there. Great punt right here by Kaysen. I think the longest, 67 yards, one of the longest punts of the year for us, definitely one of the longest in, in the ACC, I believe. And, uh, but again, change field position. Now look how big this is. First play, they come out, throw a flat, uh, uh, flat out there late. Guess what happens? Pick. Terrence Smith, great play. And that's what ha I always talk about field position. You hear me talk about it all the time now. It's critical. And then when you make mistakes. Nice run up inside by Carlos. Gets his arm out, touchdown. Be careful sticking it out. Make sure we got to take care of that ball. That's a great job getting in the end zone. And every, every, after every turnover we had, we converted the touchdown, which was very critical. And it really was the punt that swung the momentum. It was. 67 yards. It was. Change, it's a kicking game. Kicking game. Now, Roberto missed a daggone kick here. He's trying to kick it out. He just hit under it and just got a bad angle, and that's very rare for him. But, you know, he, even he makes a mistake. Here they're on the screen. They throw a lateral. See, and then we, we get it picked up. Great. Look at, you talk about flexibility and ability to run. Look at that big guy. <laughs> Yep, and then we come right back right here. Rashad Man's a great corner route. Again, one on one. Jameis makes a great throw, took a shot, touchdown right there. Again, uh, big time play by big time players. And uh, get us up 21 13 and get going. You can see it again right here. Great route. Just very smooth in and out of his cuts and uh, great play. Career night for Rashad with 13 catches. Yeah. yeah, and defense again got strong. Again, Mario coming in there. You see Darby up there. Darby played a really good game. Matthew Thomas in there doing a great job. Matthew just gets better and better each week. His role keeps expanding and are getting more guys healthy right there. Featherston getting a shot on the quarterback. Now, we lost. We're in cover two. Corner right there. P.J.'s got to, you know, help on that on, and divide that zone a little bit better. And he jumped on an underneath route. Great play here by Tyler Hunter trying to get a, a like, a double post route. They get it. Now, we did a great job of setting the edge on these plays right here. Their defense, and then we're rallying to the ball. Got great pursuit lane. P.J., well, I thought he tackled really well on the night. Good play by Terrence. Marcus Walker in there. Again, look at Mario, guys, getting pressure, making that ball come out quick. Darby almost could have had a pick right there on a slant. And, uh, but great coverage by Ronald. Get a little counter play back outside. We, you know, uh, gets hit right there, get about four or five yard game. But we, we start a heck of a drive right here. We're being very physical, run pass, nice stretch play up inside. Backside backer has to make the play. Get about eight yards right there and just keep on moving. Up inside. Now, he's got to stick that on the front side. That, that's a misread right here. And then this cannot happen. We got lucky right there, had another fumble. We got to start taking care of that football a little bit better. Jameis right here, finding the number two receiver. They went cover two, changed the coverage on him. Did a great job of reading it. Getting that. Now here's the inside play again. Great job by Carlos. Really well blocked in by Freddie and, and the whole group. Ryan Hofield, and Trey Jackson, Bobby Hart. You know that whole group in there doing a great job again. Jameis finds a one on one outside. He's able to get the ball to 80 in a good position. And again, got the flat right. Oh, I'd like to see 80 stay up right there. Ball was a hair high, but I'd like to see him stay up. They played some man coverage. And uh, we went to a bunch route and got out of it. And again, throwing a quick screen. Got, there's two or three options he has on that play, and this bubble screen is one of them off of motion. And uh, we, we utilized that pretty well last night two or three times. Here we get a little horn play coming around the edge, double pulls by the center and, and right guard, and uh, great run by Dalvin right there. Gets taken a great goal line run. Third down right here. Could have got it to the flare out there. He got his eyes up, started to pump and go to Nick right there, and he realized he could pump it and get around it. And, and uh, good job by Jameis. Really good play. Boy, he tends to always make good decisions down there around the goal line. Run, play run. action. We got the boot route right here. Uh, good job. Kept leverage on the ball. Nate Andrews making a real good play. Demarcus Walker forcing the ball out of the quarterback's hands. Uh, here they get a little out route on third down. Terrence got to squeeze that a little bit more. And that coverage, Terrence has got to squeeze that guy just a little more on, on that play. It's a good route by them. Good play. Again, Jalen coming on pressure. Get the out route. Good job. Tyler Hunter tracking him down. Had to make a really good throw. Good tight coverage. Again here, got, look at the pressure. Guy's getting to him. 
There's Jalen Ramsey, Tyler Hunter, Mario Edwards, Featherston, Eddie Goldman. Those guys all back there in the quarterback's lap and along with Casher. And those guys, you know, that's tough. And then right before the half, we, we popped that run, was out in the 30s, fixing to go two minutes. And then uh, they called a penalty. We said, we're up 28-13. We, let's just get back in the half right here and stay up 15 points going into halftime. Yes, yeah, so a 28-13 at the intermission, and uh, despite you know, four touchdowns on the board, really the defense was the story here with all the turnovers you forced. Exactly right. And they you know you play on short fields on offense. And people, mm -hmm. we did that a lot last year. Our mm -hmm. defense create turnovers, create field position. We played on a short field, and when you do, you're able to score a lot of points. And, uh, again, they set the tone. We had one really long drive uh, on offensively. I think we had, in that game we had a 15-play, 11-play, and a 9-play drive in the game. But in that first half we had that one long, and the rest of them were all set up from defensive turnovers, which – that's how you know those are great when you get them. And along those lines, the uh, the big play of the first half, actually big play, is sponsored by uh, Napleton Infinity of Tallahassee, and uh, it's a couple of them. Terrence Smith with a pick, and then Eddie yeah. Goldman. Uh, he thought he had a scoop and score. They cheated him. He just got the scoop and the recovery. You really could say all three turnovers, but you're right. And, and you know he scored. We all set up points, and we got the one after Mario's force fumble. All caused all caused those. So defense, when you're forcing those so many turnovers, and the offense is taking advantage of them, that's why you're playing team football. One way to force turnovers, you like to say, affect the quarterback. This is a Virginia team that I think was uh, eighth or ninth in the country at fewest, you know, not allowing sacks. Yeah. Had only given up eight in nine games, and you got four of them against them yeah, on Saturday. Yeah, we did, and uh, we did that. And then they were on the other side. They did a good job of getting sacks on defense, and uh, they were up there in the country in that too, and they, they got us two on us, but they hit the quarterback eight times. We got theirs 21 times in the game, so – you know, we want to cut ours down just a little bit, but you can affect a quarterback 21 times a game. That's a good deal. It's a big number. Florida State with a uh, comfortable lead at half, 28-13. We'll get to the second half highlights when we continue momentarily here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Championship season in review presented by Hyundai. Proud supporter of college football and loyal fans everywhere. This game right here reveals who we are as a team. If you believe in the organization, do you believe in what we're teaching? Do you believe it down in your heart or just something you just say? In the eye formation behind Javis Winston, the snap. Hand off to Wilder. He gets the first. Makes a tackle with the 25 to the 20. He's behind the blocker to the 10-yard line. He's inside the 8 to the 7. Eye formation from the 5-yard line. The snap. Toss pitch. Wide side is Wilder with a blocking convoy. 3-2-1. Touchdown, Florida State. Big blocking by Chad Abram. To throw the ball, Tanner Price throws it up. It's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Terrence Smith. Down the far sideline. Outside the numbers, 10. Five. Knocked out of bounds at the three-yard line. High formation. Hand off to Vontae Freeman. He finds daylight. He finds the end zone. It's 13 to nothing. Florida State. Touchdown, FSU. Tanner Price awaits. Here's the snap. He's got to get rid of it in a hurry. we got a four-man run. He's going to be hit. That's been intercepted by Mario Edwards. He takes it away from the offensive lineman. It's first down to the 15-yard line. Knowles are up 14 zip. Jameis Winston shotgun, play action fake, dropping Winston, looking Winston, throws toward the end zone, he's got, oh, what a great catch in the end zone, Calvin Benjamin, touchdown Florida State. He can drop it back as Price, Price dumps the ball, it's intercepted, picked off, at the 50 to the 40, to the 30, it's Nate Andrews to the 20, nobody's going to catch him, touchdown Florida State, Nate Andrews with a defensive gym, and the Seminoles lead 27 to nothing. Three interceptions in the game, here's the snap, the handoff goes to the right side is Josh Harris, and he is, oh, fumble Football. It's loose, picked up by the goal, down the sideline, touchdown FSU, it's Jalen Ramsey, picks it up on a bounce, and the Noles are up 34 to nothing. Side play action fake by Cameron, running to his near side, Post the pass, oh, it's intercepted, it's picked off at the 27-yard line, Nate Andrews has a pair today. O'Leary in motion across the formation, here's the snap, play action fake, sold by O'Leary, flag though, passed out field, caught by Abram, touchdown FSU, Chad Abram. Great hands. He makes the fingertip good in the near side of the end zone. Wake has the ball, and the ball batted into the end. It's intercepted. Picked off by Christian Jones. He's out to the 10-yard line. Goal from the five in motion, Nick O'Leary. High formation. Hand off to the left. Carlos Williams, three, two, one. Touchdown, FSU. Three defenders could not deny Carlos Williams his touchdown run. He's out of the shotgun, rolling left, left-handed quarterback Tyler Cameron, looking upfield, looking upfield, throws it upfield. It is it's intercepted. Picked off again at the 41-yard line. FSU football. And the Noles have it. We're back in business. Intercepted by Marquez White. Boy, another freshman. Three true freshmen now have come up with a turnover. Good snap to spot. Here is the kick. It's long enough, and it is good. Knowles lead 52-0. 
52 nothing on a 42 yard field goal somebody hold it here's the kickoff short kickoff returnable by kermit whitfield to the 10 to the 15 he's fast to the 25 he found a grace to the 45 you're 45 to the 47 flags up he's still running kermit to the 30 kermit to the 20 kermit to the 10 give him six it's a touchdown at Mizzou. he beat a face mask at midfield he refused to go down and kermit takes it 85 95 yards and you've been looking for that to happen for the last two three weeks that he's been in there i mean he's fearless running in there he's full speed all the way through trying to find the scene some of those fans get the war chant going in winston it sounds good for Mir. A 9-0 Florida State team, 7-0 in conference play, heading back to the ACC championship. You got a lot of season in review presented by Hyundai, proud supporter of college football and loyal fans everywhere. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, you had a 15-point uh, edge at the half, but you weren't going to get the ball to start the second half, so obviously you wanted to go out there and stop Virginia and then just put the foot back on the gas pedal. Exactly right. Let the defense continue to play like they were playing, get a good kickoff, get them pinned back, and uh, try to get the field position to come back and move the ball. Great job, Roberto. Again, hitting a lot of kickoffs out, give him no returns. He's hitting the ball very well. Uh, good coverage. We had good coverage when we did. One time they popped one, but here. They popped a run the first play, missed tackle right there. We got it, Reggie North, we got to make that tackle. Now, but again, then the defense starts stiffening up. And I'll tell you what, 15 hits you, you're not breaking too many of those. It's a great job by him, him and Terrence Smith right there. Again, they're trying to get a little boot action. We did a great, there's Derek Mitchell, great job. Jalen Ramsey coming off the backside, setting the edges of the defense. We did a great job of putting guys on the edge and staying there. Now this is, boy, I mean, gosh, dang, we trip on our own. I mean, it's out the gate for about a 15, 20 yard gain there. Carlos, good play. Well, we were just inches from some things right here. Now, this right here, well, again, I, I thought there was a little contact there. They didn't call it. Got to go on. Got a punt. I thought Kaysen did an excellent job on tonight, really controlling field position for us. He gets so much better every week. Here they are moving the ball. Uh, we, but we had a blitz. We got to get over and get to that coverage, and the guy didn't get there in time. That there could have been a clip. A good job right here. Really good job of P.J. Williams blitzing all night and then Mario filling back in. That was great plays by both of those guys. Even though P.J. didn't get the tackle, he caused the play. And yeah, they get a little motion out here. Look at, now look at the leverage on the ball. Inside, outside, convert. That, that's how you play defense. Great job. Now, Dalvin, right, we miss a block at the point of attack, and he fumbles. And this, you know, no matter what, it didn't, shouldn't cause you to fumble. He had the ball clean. Now, he got banged up. Hopefully, he'll be okay. We'll have to check and see when the doctors look at him. Sunday and Monday, but uh, that first play, they retaliate. See, again, Jalen, we're right there in good position to make that play. We just lost track of the ball, and they hit a vertical route, and we got to do a little better on that. But yeah, I thought Jalen played really well. Now, here's what I was happy about offensively. We responded right back. Took the ball right back down the field. Right there, good two straight passes to uh, Rashad Green, and uh, they were playing him one-on-one, -on -one, so we took him. And uh, now we get a little play action, and get a nice play right here to uh, Ermin Lane. Ermin had two really nice catches on the night. Looked really good, I thought, playing last night. He just keeps getting better and better. Here we get a little motion, and we get the inside zone. Now, I mean, this play, I mean, we're it's going. It's a 50-yard touchdown. We just get tripped by our shoelaces, but sometimes that happens. That happened two or three times in the game. We were just inches from breaking big, big-time runs. Now, again, Jameis had the run option, but he had the bubble option. Got it on the backside right there. Uh, we're blocking well out front. Again, there's Bobo Wilson in the flat right there. Nice and short. Bobo's really just quietly has good games every week. Four, five, six catches and just does things right. Here, Jameis just, I wish he'd kept this ball just a hair higher. They got a little bit of pressure, not too much pressure right there. Good route by Travis. And uh, he won, again, uh, Roberto coming in, getting a field goal again, gets back up two scores, which is very critical. Roberto starts a new, a new streak. Yes. Keep kicking now. They, they kicked it off. We get it. Uh, Kick that a little short. He missed that one just a hair. And we lot out of our lane. We had a guy trip and fall. We were running a, a cross rub right there on our turn guys. And here they get the ball out there on the edge. Good, but look at that defense. Coming out, PJ setting the edge. But who is that? It's Chris Casher coming off a block. There's Derek Noddy who played really well in that game. Getting better and better. Desmond Holland on the blitz. PJ coming on the corner, getting her hands up. They had a screen on, affecting the screen. Guys were setting on the screen. Really nice job. Again, coming off that edge again. Look, Tyler Hunter. You're beating the blitz. Put pressure on that quarterback. Keep affecting him and keep hitting him. 
Great job by Tyler right there, getting off the edge and getting around there. That's in favor. That's an art to be able to pass for, especially when you're a secondary guy. Great job, Jameis checking down to his third receiver here. It's Carlos out in the flat. Really good run. I get about 20, 25 yard gain right there off a of flare route, which is very critical. They were playing two man coverage and busted the back. Again here, Jameis again checking down, taking the flat routes, taking, being patient. They weren't going to give us a lot of deep stuff. They were going to stay back and and force us to go the long route. Again, Jameis right here. Sees a blitz coming right there. We got a slide out. Really good out route to Bobo Wilson. Uh, this is a nice job. Here we get the play action. We got If we give him a second more, we can make this throw because we had Nick coming open right there and we had the post route coming up. We had them both coming and just hair off, had some pressure. But again, Roberto gets it. Now, how about this one? Hits the top of the post and kicks in. And uh, actually, good Lord was smiling on us there. <laughs> we'll take it. I don't know if he called it, but take it. Yep. But again here, look at the pressure. I mean, uh, Demarcus Walker, great job by Jalen covering right there. Guys just constantly hounding. There's Derek Noddy getting there trying to screen game. But look at it. Reggie, hang on right here. Don't sling him. Just hang on. But then guys getting to the football. Terrence Smith, Jalen Ramsey, guys just continually getting to that football. Tay Rashad did a great job of getting all the punts too and not letting that ball hit. The, right here, Marquez, guy, if he kicks that guy out right there and he had position, we get, you know, we get some uh, field position. Now, they wrapped a blitz late on an add-on blitz, and uh, we got to get that. We had a tough slide back on a, on a protection. They got us on one, and then we popped. We're backed up. There's no sense to throw it and turn it over. Let's get eight or ten yards add to the punt. Our punter's been kicking the ball extremely well. Defense been playing exceptional. Let's don't get crazy here. And, but, you know, great job. Fit, almost a 50-yard punt, about a five-yard return. Great shot by Marquez. He forced the guy up, and then our guys can't see who that looks like. Uh, I couldn't tell who the numbers were there on the plays, but good play. Good job, P.J. Williams, man-to-man -man coverage on second one, taking a shot at him. Uh, this drive here is very good. Guys in the flat, good job. Nate forces him out. Now give him a big play. Make them go the long route. Oh, Brutus gets out there. We got a flare route right here. Ah, we got to get there, Terrence. They end up about a yard short, though, on fourth down. And they pop it up. We got a, we had a blitz, got penetration. They got it popped up in there. DeMarcus Walker and those guys got there. But as DeMarcus getting pressured, look, look at that. Look at that blitz right there, P.J. Williams. Great job by he and Mario Edwards. Getting to that quarterback. Got to affect the quarterback. Oh, that one there could have put the game away. Ronald, great play, put himself in position, just didn't come, didn't finish the play. And this is third and 18 right there, and Terrence has got to continue to drop in the seam right there and make that throw a much harder throw, and that was one mistake, one of the few mistakes they did, but then the defense really stiffened up down here. I mean, these guys, they get a second three, and then we, we bring pressure. They try a third down five right here. Featherston, again, bouncing the play, though. He made it, he made it bubble. Guys getting the ball, P.J. and Casher and Brutus and uh, – Tyler Hunter, those guys all getting there. Now it's fourth and fourth and seven to get pressure. They get a little screen route. Look at that, Jalen Ramsey. Great play on fourth and seven, and we get it. Now offensively, we got to take control, control of the ball. we got to move it, not let them have it. Again, that's what we've done all year except for one game. A big throw right here. Second and seven, he reads the backside of a call, and then Ermin Lane is a true fresher and makes another huge play. Each week, he just continues to show up at big moments. And again, run a power play here. Very well blocked. This drive was extremely throwing and catching the ball. We were very efficient right there. Nick O'Leary, who had a very good night blocking, I thought, played really well. Jameis right in the fine. They, we got the interference call. Come through him on the other side, hooking him with the other arm. And uh, that was a third and two or three. They were bunching the box. Great job by Jameis. And here's another one. Third and six, we had to play call the other way. And they left they had, uh, Rashad one-on-one -on, -one on the other side. He went straight to it. Then we continued to run the clock out. Carlos right here, moving the ball, doing a great job. Those cameramen, hope they're, hope they're okay. I mean, our guys, when you get hit like that, you're a coach or one of those guys on the sideline, that can really hurt you. But, again, picked up the critical, made them use all their timeouts. We got down there and didn't want to try to score again. Just run the clock out, victory formation. And, uh, you know, Virginia, I, I give it, had a very good football team. I say that big. They were physical. They played extremely hard. Mike London is a great guy, does a great job coaching. And uh, they, they, they can win out and win their last two games to go to a bowl game. But it was a very good game, very physical. 34-20, the final score is uh, Florida State makes it uh, 25 in a row. Uh, so congratulations there, Coach. We saw a, a lot of different uh, uh, blitz looks, or maybe with more frequency, corner blitz, safety blitz. I mean, we've seen the linebackers and, 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 coming and moving in. Them, and moving, you know, Mario Edwards standing up, coming inside, where a back would have to lock up on him and just create some different packages where people, because, you know, late in the year, people get to pattern you, and you have to always have new things. Nine tackles for Mario Edwards out of that spot. And, and I know you're moving them all over, but uh, he, he was Sorry a man on Saturday. Four tackles for loss, a sack. And it shows you what he's capable of all the time. I think he's kind of hitting that second win of the hopefully the end of the season. And when he plays into a play like that, and you get Eddie Goldman going like that, you get our linebackers back in the groove, and those guys covering. You know, we can really be good on defense. 
big plays of the uh, second half sponsored by Xfinity. And it's really uh, down the stretch. Red zone defense has been something this team has been good at all year long. you got a key fourth down stop, and then the offensively the, the catch to Ehrman Lane helps seal it. Exactly. There's a little over five minutes to go, and they got the ball down to the Raiders score and they make it a seven-point game. And then, you know, anything can happen. We're second and three, we get a loss. And third and five, they run a play, we get them to fourth and seven. And then they try to throw a screen, and Jalen Ramsey makes a huge stop on fourth down. And then we were able to, on second and seven, convert. We hit, we hit a backside drag route on the second seven, which, you know, people say, why are you throwing it? But we had to – it was too early to sit on that ball. They had moved it well, you know, at time, had explosiveness. We wanted to not give them the ball back, and you got a quarterback you have confidence in. In our lane made a huge play. As a result, uh, Florida State goes on to record the victory 34-20, to and it sets up a showdown with you-know-who. The rivalry game is uh, up next. Knowles and Canes, we'll talk about it when we come back on the Jimbo Kitchen Show. Inside the Helmet is presented by Nissan. My name is Wilson Bell. I'm a redshirt freshman. My hometown is Mobile, Alabama, and I play offensive line. Um, my first football game was my eighth grade year, and um, that's like my first time really getting to, getting to see what football was all about. And, um, I just, when I first got on the field, I started noticing that uh, it was just very competitive and I love the competitive edge and I just wanted to outdo that guy. And since I wasn't uh, as good of a player then, I kind of like started like to work at, work at my craft, work on my craft and try to get better so I can get a chance to come to a major college. So I guess I'm kind of living my dream now. I played basketball, but the coaches kind of made me stop because I started losing too much weight. So I had to stop playing that. And, um, I tried baseball, but you know, that ball comes a little too fast, so <laughs> I just stuck with football. It's extremely important. If you're not intelligent, you probably won't be a successful offensive lineman. Like, you have to know what's going on, where the play is going. You have to know what the quarterback is doing, what the running back is doing. If you don't know the defensive fronts, like me, if, you don't, if, you, if you're not intelligent enough to figure all those things out, you might as well move over to defensive line. Like we all, we all come together to make this one big, just happy family. Like, like we see Rashad score, everybody's happy for Rashad. Offensive lineman get a cake, everybody's happy for his pancake. When Jameis makes an awesome throw, everybody's cheering for Jameis. It's like, it's nobody, it's nobody like really jealous of anybody. You know, even though I'm like a second string offensive lineman, I'm happy that Trey Jackson is getting all the perks and all the awards because I get to see him do it, so I can come behind him and do it. There's no jealousy, and we just one big family, you know. To me, it's extremely important because I like to see how they react to certain situations because when I get in a bind sometimes on the field or at practice or something, I watch how Trey reacts when he gets in the same bind or how Sway reacts, <clears throat> and that, that kind of helps me uh, understand how I should react so I don't make the same mistakes or I don't get um, overly, overly emotional about something. And it's like, it's, it plays a major part in like helping us see what we need to do. Especially like last year when we had all those leaders, we, we were successful because they made us think that's how we supposed to act. We supposed to act up to the part of them. We don't have to act like kids. We had to act like they wanted us to act. So when they were stepping up and doing, doing things like making big plays and not being selfish, it made us not want to be selfish. So the leaders play a big role on the team and I feel like we have a vast majority of those. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing because, you know, once again, I'm, I'm living my dream. You know, most people don't get this opportunity, so I'm, I'm going to live it to the fullest. Even though I am on the sideline and I maybe I get in second half, maybe I don't, I want to make sure my team stays up. I don't want the attitude to get down. I don't want to come off as jealous. I'm not jealous. I'm glad that my team has been successful. I don't want to be that guy that's like, man, I should be on the field. I want to be that guy like, good job, Cam. Good job, Trey. Good job, Jameis. I want to be that guy because if you keep them up, they're going to go on the field and just keep producing, keep producing, and we're going to win another national championship. And then when I get my chance, I want the guys behind me to be like, good job, Wilson. And they're going to so, you know, so the cycle can continue. Inside the Helmet is presented by Nissan.
Each Saturday during football season, Seminole fans of all ages cheer, support, and analyze every aspect of the game. But this passion doesn't go away when the game days are over. Live from the Four Points by Sheridan in downtown Tallahassee, you're watching the Jimbo Fisher Call-In Show. Good evening. Welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Call-In Show. We're here on a Every Wednesday. Wednesday night, fans have a unique opportunity to relive and share the top plays of the week and look ahead to upcoming games. And who would be better to talk Seminole football with than head coach Jimbo Fisher? Hey, thanks for coming out tonight. Boy, this is a great group it's of folks. Great, it's the biggest group we've had, I think. Yeah, this is, uh, there's not an empty seat. I know the park is pretty tough out there, so you had to brave, uh, you know, parking conditions <laughs> to get to the, uh, hey, we appreciate you coming out. The Jimbo Fisher call-in show is an hour-long chat every week during football season. Fans across the Knoll Nation send in their questions as the voice of Florida State football, Gene Deckerhoff, yucks it up with Coach Fisher. The Jimbo Fisher call-in show is something, I learned something new, probably more than just one thing. Many things new every week. We get callers from all over the country. We're on the internet. We've got we've got callers from overseas, and so I think I think that and, and Jimbo's always amazed uh, about technology that we get phone calls from as far away as I. We got a call once from Japan, and uh, so that's via the internet. It's a uh, it's it's a great way to connect. We'll be practicing like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we'll, we'll do what we do. The call-in show is a tradition that started in 1989 when Coach Bowden led the team. A lot of coaches don't care for the call-in show format. And, uh, you know, this goes back in the day, uh, well, I'll just tell you this, Bobby refused to do a call-in show until 1989. And we talked him into doing it, and uh, the rest is history. And then he got very comfortable with the show. And uh, Jimbo's just exactly like Bobby. I mean, he thoroughly enjoys talking football with fans of Florida State. And the show wouldn't be the same without the weekly calls from some of the regulars. Uh, Mike from uh, Jacksonville is uh, on the air, and so go ahead and raise your okay. Mike from Jacksonville, you're on the air. Touchdown, Florida State. <laughs> how y'all doing tonight, Coach? Good, how you doing, Mike? To enhance the fan experience, FSU added a live audience so local Knowles can come out and watch in person. You're sitting that close to like one of the best football coaches in America, so it's crazy. I like kind of the relationship that they have. They just kind of like, you know, banter back and forth a little bit, and you can tell that they're comfortable, and so it's fun to just like see them up there kind of having a casual conversation with um, the callers and also with the audience. I f it feels very uh, personal the way everything's run. This intimate atmosphere allows fans to socialize, get an autograph, and even win trivia prizes. It's the same group of people every week. We get to know each other. We're, we're like a family. It's just really fun. And I love seeing Jimbo and Gene relaxed and joking around. It's just fun. Whether fans have been a part of the Colin show for numerous years or it's their first show, they can agree on one thing. There's nothing like getting a little behind the scenes look at the Seminoles. I would, I would tell people about it, but I'd also try not to like spread it too much. You know, keep it to myself a little bit. You know, I try not to tell too many people about it. It's kind of like a well-kept secret, but yeah, it's awesome, and it's free. If you're a football fan, if you're a Florida State fan, I would suggest tuning in on Wednesday nights from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock and see what Jimbo has to say, and his questions are always answered, and uh, it's in, in language that you can understand. And uh, like I say, I learn something every week. Whether you dial in, tune in, or check in, the Colin Show will certainly hit your midweek football thing. Our look ahead is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Register at KnollsContest.com for a chance to be the official photographer of the game. Welcome back, Tom Block and uh, Coach Jimbo Fisher and Coach uh, FSU Miami. That's really all we need to say. Miami's been playing very well of late. The Canes are six and three under Al Golden, and they'll be at home for this one as you head to South Florida. The last three games they've been extremely impressive. Had some really tough games with some very good opponents early in the season, and you see their young guys getting better and better defensively. They're ranked up very high. And of course, Duke Johnson as good a player as there is in the country. The young quarterback is really playing well, and they have explosive guys at tight end and receiver, and they're blocking well up front on offensive line. Yeah, Duke Johnson, uh, you, you just mentioned him. I mean, he's one of the top running backs nationally when you look oh, at what no he's doubt. done. Very dynamic, can catch the ball. I mean, runs hard, uh, big playability. I mean, he has a lot of long, long touchdown runs, and uh, we're going to have our hands full. 
Florida State, Miami, maybe from a national perspective, hasn't been what it was for that long period of time. But, I mean, you coaching it, you're on the sidelines. I imagine the intensity is every bit the same. You don't feel it on your on that sideline. You know, because both teams want to win. Both teams, again, uh, play very hard. Both teams have a lot of skill and very talented guys. And, uh, you know, it's always a great game. It's one of the reasons you come to Florida State to play in that rivalry. No question. It'll be a, a primetime affair once again, an 8 o'clock kick from South Florida as Florida State and Miami renew their rivalry. We'll come back with some final thoughts on the Jimbo Fisher Show right after this. Our look ahead is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Register at KnollsContest.com for a chance to be the official photographer of the game. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Television Show. Jonathan Schlacey alongside nutritionist Katie Messick. We're going to talk about snacks here, but we're not talking about cookies or anything like that. What is a snack? A snack can be considered a mini meal. So when we look for a snack, it's going to be about one to 200 calories with about eight to 10 grams of protein to help keep you full until that next meal. How often are you looking to have a snack? In most people's days, you can fit maybe two or three snacks, depending how long they're up for and how long that they're at their job. So usually around two snacks a day in between lunch and dinner and breakfast and lunch. Some people will have a big breakfast and they kind of roll into lunch and they would skip that kind of window for a snack. Do you have to have a snack even if you're not hungry? Not necessarily, but we want to make sure that you have a snack on hand if you are hungry because you never want to ignore your hunger. Um, your hunger is a way of saying that, hey, we need some fuel, we need to keep going. So definitely fuel your hunger and have a snack when you're hungry, but you don't necessarily have to eat a snack when you're not. What is the importance of a snack then? The importance of a snack is to help fill those gaps and help you from getting that lower, lower blood sugar. You want to make sure that you have your blood sugar evenly distributed throughout the day and the, the snacks fill those gaps in between the meals um, to help kind of break that up and keep your, your blood sugar going. You, you've talked about what kind of calories you're looking at, but what is the best kind of snacks to have throughout the day? So to help regulate your blood sugar, you always want a good source of carbohydrates and hopefully they're whole grains or even maybe a little bit of a fruit. So here we have some frosted mini wheats and they have do have that sugar coating. You can get your, your sweet fix from that. It's also got a lot of whole grain and fiber to help keep you full. You can eat those as a snack by itself or you can even mix it with a little bit of milk um, to help get, get that going. Um, we also have a piece of fruit. Piece of fruit, you're just gonna burn right through it. You're not gonna really be satis satisfied from it later on. So you maybe wanna pair it with a protein, maybe a little cheese or even a handful of nuts um, to help keep you full along. And that's what the protein's gonna do um, in that instance. A lot of people just head towards the vending machines, but you're saying you wanna kind of avoid that? Yeah, the vending machines aren't really f um, filled with great nutritional options. They are coming out with more vending ar items that will help that. Um, but maybe kind of like keep a little drawer at your desk um, with different nuts or maybe even trail mixes so that you have something quick and healthful on hand. Are you looking to always have two snacks a day? If you're not working out, is it important still to have snacks? Yeah, so what that does is help keep your meals in, in control. You're not going to overeat at your meals, you're not going to get seconds, and you're going to make better decisions when you do have those snacks throughout the day. So I think two, one to two snacks a day, even if you're not working out, can still be really beneficial. I feel people are not going to have too hard of a time having snacks every day. Thank you so much. And next time when we talk to you, it'll be around the holidays, so we'll talk about that holiday meal. Some final thoughts from Coach Fisher and uh, Coach, you know, all this uh, talk nationally about the college football playoff and, uh, you know, it's been great from an interest standpoint for college football. But, you know, you have your list of things that you need to do. You take it one game at a time and, and one, you know, the first thing is to try and win your division and, uh, and that's yes. still out there for you. you you've got you to win one more game to win the division and get back to Charlotte. Exactly right. You have goals you have to knock off as you go and it's very critical. We can we get that one win and gets us back into Charlotte, which is uh, always your first and ultimate goal. You have to be number one in your conference before you can go number one in the country. Well, and uh, Florida State will get that chance against Miami this week. And, uh, Coach, I think, you know, th this past week maybe uh, you were about as healthy as you've been all year long. We'll cross the fingers you're at that time of year where everybody's got bumps and bruises, but, uh, you know, you just got to keep some guys upright and get through a few more weeks. You really do, and that's where, you, and that's where it finds out. This is uh, the grind, as they say, and, and uh, the grit that goes with football, and you're going to be banged and bruised at this time of year, and you're going to go play your big rival games. There's going to be extra physical games. Guys are going to play that much harder. So, you know, that's part the body's got to take it. Those guys got to make sure they get their rest and treatments and uh, take care of themselves. It's all part of it. A big one coming up for Florida State, the Knowles and Kane Saturday night from South Florida. We'll have the highlights for you next week, and we'll see you then right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. <laughs>